Hey, it's so good to see everybody this morning. Welcome, welcome to uh, part four or five <laughs> of the ownership class. One, two, three, four, four. But we have been blitzing through a lot of information, and I don't want to uh, 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 n- neglect filling in the blanks where they need to be filled in. Good morning uh, for any of you. Last week, we talked about baptism with the Holy Spirit. Again, realizing that not everybody comes from a, a spirit-filled background, and you may have theology that, that has, that you want to fill in gaps on. I, I didn't hear from anybody this week. I just want to remind you, it's okay to, to call or come by the office, ask questions, and, and we'll try to fill that in, uh, fill in gaps, uh, particularly if you, if you've come from, how many have, uh, have read through this, uh, hungry sheet here, this brochure? A number of you have. That's awesome. Cause I, I believe, uh, for many, we, we need to know more about something before I even know the questions I want to ask. And this, this biblical survey of it, it's not a whole book you have to read or something. But, uh, mainly, you know what? All of us stay open for more of God. And, and however he wants to pour in with God, do it. And the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the boldness of God, all these things. This morning, uh, I, I love this topic. And, and it's not something that I preach about all the time. We'll allude to it many times. But uh, I, I want to I wanna go some places. Again, if you have thoughts or insights or, or even questions you want to have in here, feel free. Just put your hand up and we can... Walk through some of that. And the topic is the second coming of Christ. Uh, Really trying to answer the question, is Jesus really coming back? Let me ask that in here. Is Jesus really coming back? Yes, he is. I, uh, I I would, I will read our, our doctrinal statement. Again, if you haven't been through that about page, uh, five or six, uh, in the book where we, Walk through this is this we believe. Those are the things that are listed on the website too. If you haven't been had a chance to go through that, feel free uh, to do that. Pages five, six, and seven. I think this is taken from that. We believe in the premillennial. This is kind of you're trying to com- compact a, a statement. We'll unpack it a little bit. We believe in the premillennial second coming of Jesus. First, to resurrect the righteous dead and to catch away the living saints to him in the air, second, to come uh, to reign on the earth a thousand years. That's where we will reign with him as well. Uh, I want to way up front realize and recognize that not everybody believes this. You do not have to believe what I'm going to teach this morning about this to go to heaven. I have dear brothers and sisters who believe the catching away or Jesus' return will be at a different period than I'm going to present to you this morning. If So I'm, I guess I'm telling you, don't choke on this, but I want to give you enough information to persuade you in the way I believe. <laughs> I, I say that kind of tongue-in-cheek because it, it's not... It's not it's not crucial. Again, sometimes we get hung up over, over non-essentials. I, again, so many, so much of what we, I believe the Bible teaches, it's, it's not heaven or hell issues, but it's a trajectory. If my foundation is here, my trajectory, I look at things differently. So if, you know, if I believe, I, and I believe the Bible teaches that the, that the catching away of the church, the word rapture is not actually found in the Bible, but the meaning of it is. We'll we'll get there. But uh, if I if I believe that the Bible teaches the return of Jesus is in, 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 imminent, it means at any moment that He can come, and I, and I do really believe that there are prophetic things yet to be fulfilled, but those prophetic things are after the catching away, from my perspective. Let me, uh, again, does that mean 
that studying about the return of Jesus doesn't matter. No, I, I think it really does matter. I think a perspective of this, uh, seeing that he's coming back, how our lives should reflect that. If I, if we knew that Jesus was coming back in 72 hours, how diligent would that make us sharing Jesus with people who don't know him yet? He can. He could. Uh, the po- possibility is there. It might be 72 years. I, I don't think so, but it could be. But you know what? If it's in, say, 30 years, he will have already come for me. Hello. At my age and stage. That's not a negative. I'm just saying for everybody who's who's passed or who's died, he's already come. For every believer who's died, he's already come for them. It really was irrelevant to them when the catching away of the church, when Jesus would come back. But Jesus left us with some clear things. Let me let me uh, I will let me sum up my eschatology in two statements. Some of you have heard it before. Uh, eschatology me is a long way of saying the study of the end times. If you want to really have more syllables, go into an eschatological study, and mine is summed up in two phrases: He's coming, and I'm going. Okay, and the, the the timeline can be different than I would suppose, than you would suppose. What I don't want us to have, and I refuse to adapt, is an escapist mentality that says, you know, I'm gonna, I'm a, I'm saved. I love Jesus. I know the Lord, and I know when He comes back, I'm going with Him, and I'm gonna hide out on a mountain in Arkansas. And try to escape everything else uh, until he comes. I I don't think God's called us to do that. If you when you today eat lunch and and all of you are welcome. I, most of you have are, are new here in the last few months. I want to personally invite you to the newcomers lunch after service today. Uh, if you've come even in the last five or six months and and haven't been that, it's a time you'll you'll meet the. The staff, the the heads of ministries and stuff, but we'll have just it's a casual laid back time. You get a get a free light meal out of it. It's just it's a, take take forty five minutes or an hour with us, and we'll just have a good time. But you're welcome after church is over. In fact, it's in the fellowship hall where that is. I forgot where I was going when I got off that track. But hmm, anybody help me remember? He's coming. I'm going. If we know that Jesus, if we believe that his return uh, can be at any moment, my perspective when I have that conversation with that person in Walmart, if if that's the framework, if that's the lens that I view eternity in, I'm going to be more inclined to reach out, not be casual. Listen, guys, I know what it is to, uh, this, this is forever etched in my, my heart, I was probably early 20s and sitting in the room with, uh, uh, it wasn't a direct family member, but somebody close, a guy that was uh, in serious condition, but I, the rest of the, the closer family had gone to do something. I'm going to just sit in there. So, uh, I, you know, I was already saved. and ha- Actually, I think I had my Bible with me. Didn't have it on phones in those years, just FYI for you younger ones. But I had, had a Bible with me. And in that, in that, uh, room, I, I was studying scripture, and I knew this guy was lost. He didn't know Jesus, at, at least his lifestyle, and nothing, nothing testified that he knew the Lord. And you know, you have the thoughts. I probably should, might should share Jesus, but he's he's sleeping, he's resting. As I watched, he's breathing, and it stopped. I mean, I was in there a while, a good while, and my only one there. And I. I'm seeing his breathing stop panic and I run out, go out in the hallway and they come in and, and they resuscitate him. But then in between time, as I'm thinking, I, I should have shared the Lord with him. You know, I, I, I think that's a responsibility that we have when we have the opportunity. I don't mean you got to run up and down the Richland Mall and grab everybody you see and say, you know, do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? But we need to stay open for God's nudges, and I was just out of out of convenience or out of fear or whatever. I just 
yeah, I'm just going to stay here and read the Bible. And but, but when he stopped breathing, man, it got real. And uh, then I'm out in the hallway, and they're in there working and praying for him. They, they resuscitated him. If my remembering, that's a long year, a lot of years ago, now, uh, that I was able to go into the, into ICU where he was speaking his ear. But I, I don't know, I don't know that that he uh, made a surrendered commitment to God. I don't know where his consciousness was at that point. Uh, it wasn't very external. I, I can say that. So I'm just saying, yeah, I don't want to miss divine appointments that God sets up for me to act on. And uh, again, I don't think the second coming of Jesus is to be viewed as a threat. It is a promise. It's a promise. Look, at, And where we see uh, prophetically things unfolding, we have the war, perhaps the precipice of not, not to interject fear, perhaps World War Three that's brewing in the east and, and the attack on Israel and the horrors that they've undertaken and the testimonies that have come of God's provision. Great, but all, all of all of that. I want us to hear, I, I won't read everything to you, but number one is that we have a promise that Jesus said he's coming back. Somebody, oh no, we're just going to, you know, earth's going to get better and better and we'll just go into uh, the reign of Christ. I, I don't really see that, but I do know this. He's coming back. Luke 21, 25. And there'll be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the seas and waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things that are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven uh, will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man. I'm sorry, it's page 22. I didn't tell you where I was starting. Verse 27, the first section of Scripture. Then they'll see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. The next section, John 14, just three verses here. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus is saying those words. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, read that next part with me. I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. That's a cool promise. Jesus made it. That's better than Walmart guarantee. Bring your junk back and we'll swap it out or something. It's a, it's a good promise that he's coming. Uh, and But here's the perspective in Acts chapter 1. So Jesus has resurrected. He's been on the earth for about 40 days, proving himself alive as the resurrected Son of God. He leads the disciples outside of uh, Jerusalem, out to the Mount of uh, wherever it was. Mount of Ascension, I guess they call it that. But, yeah, he, and it says in, in Acts chapter 1, verse 9, on your sheet, after saying this, he, he told them, go wait in Jerusalem till they're filled with power from on high and all that. And he was with them always as he's with us. And he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching. And they could no longer see him as he ascended in his resurrected body. As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white-robed men suddenly stood among them. They said, men of Galilee, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. See, they, at the, if you read some verses in the, ahead of this in the first chapter of Acts, they're saying, Jesus, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? They were under Roman domination and persecuted as Jews and those things. Oh, are you going to at this time restore? And Jesus is like, ah, it's not for you to know the times or season. Don't, don't get over concerned about these things. Huh. But he said, that's when he said, but you'll receive power. Go, I better get there because I'm going to, I don't want to jumble up the truth of God's word. Acts chapter one. I don't want to linger here too long, but I want to, I want to look at it so you have a reference. And you can jot it down there as well. It's Acts chapter 1, uh, beginning uh, verses uh, 4 through 8. Verse 7, he said, It's not for you to know the times or season, the kairos or the chronos, 
that the Father's put in his own authority. But you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. He's saying, it's not for you to know this, but this is for you. Power of the Holy Spirit. And you'll be witnesses to me in these places. And then Jesus ascended up into heaven. And then they, they took off, followed his instruction. Went back to Jerusalem. And then they were filled with power from on how received the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So if we just focus on end time events, we can stretch out long charts. We can give you uh, references. I, there's good prophetic teaching. One is Dr. Jimmy Evans. Dr. Jimmy Evans, uh, well known, mostly known, largely known for marriage, uh, strengthening marriages, uh, but uh, is an incredible prof prophecy teacher along this line uh, as well. Second coming, you see events unfolding, and, and those are exciting. But again, I want to use those tools, like what go, what's going on in Israel, the potential of that, the potential of the... Uh, things prepared for the second, the temple to be rebuilt on the uh, Temple Mount, all that stuff. But I want to use them as witnessing tools. Uh, I, if I could scare people out of hell, I would like to do that. But but fear won't keep people walking with Jesus. There, it, it, you may it may get their attention. And did anybody get saved because you didn't want to go to hell? It's not a shameful thing. Amen. But but you're walking with Jesus, not out of so much a fear of hell, a love for Jesus and his power at work in us. And, but reality exists. So through the framework of, of prophetic events, through the framework of Jesus is coming back, these are truths, undeniable truths. We can dispute or have disagreements about when he's coming back and all of those things. But reality, Jesus made us a promise, didn't he? Let's look on page 23, and you can certainly read the other passages. I encourage you to do so at, at some point. But let's talk about this particular event called the catching away or the rapture, commonly referred to in the church as the rapture of the saints of the church. First Thessalonians 4, verse 15. Are you all there on, on page 23? We, we tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord, when Jesus returns, will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout and the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from the grave. Resurrection, their spirit and souls reunited with their resurrected bodies. Verse 17, then together with them, we who are alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds. See that word caught up? Caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. The Bible says like it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. God prepared an ark. God had Noah prepare an ark. Ushered those who would, which amounted to only Noah and his family, would go into that ark when the wrath of God was poured out on the earth, the flood, Noah and his family were inside the ark. What a picture of Jesus. He's called us, come in. Actually, God said that. Come into the ark. He didn't say go in. Come in because my presence is where I am. So we've come into Christ when the flood of tribulation comes. I believe. I believe as a picture of the ark as it was in the days of Noah that, that we are caught up. And then the Bible talks about an outpouring of the wrath of God on those who have rejected Christ. Hallelujah. Thoughts, questions, observations? Sister Arlene? Let me grab, give this to you so our listening audience can hear. Um, in this scripture, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, yes. it talks about uh, that there are bodies in the heavens and the bodies of the earth and the glory of the beast. Or wait a second. There are bodies in the heavens and the bodies in the and, earth. And tell are, where that's found, different. 1 Corinthians 15, First just so people have a reference. Uh, 15, uh, verse 40. Okay. 41. And it talks about heavenly bodies and it talks about earthly bodies. Uh -huh. So 
when someone dies, my question is, are they already with that that body that are they already dressed with the body that you know? Because it says the dead in Christ shall rise, and then they will be dressed in with their those are body. those are that's a reasonable question. Let me let me address that that scripture that you referred to. It's referring to planets' bodies. It's not talking about people's bodies. Because you look at the rest of the context, it's bodies celestial in the heavenlies, bodies terrestrial or of the earth, those, those, those things. But now, to the essence of your question, you're saying when people, uh, I think you're asking when people die, their, their spirit and soul, the Bible says, goes to be with Jesus instantly. Paul said it this way in, in Corinthians. Uh, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And, uh, but, you know, having done a couple of hundred funerals and stuff I, and go to the cemetery, well, there's the body. So obviously the body's not with, with the Lord. There, it's in the grave and will return to dust from whence it came, the Bible teaches. But at resurrection, Again, whether that body's in a graveyard or was exploded into a million pieces and whatever in, at sea or in a, a war or whatever, the believer, when Jesus comes back, then that body is going to be put back together in a glorified state like Jesus' body was, which he could walk through the wall and appear, but he had flesh and blood. He could eat. Somebody say amen. He could eat because he ate, demonstrated that. He said, I'm not a spirit. I, he was uh, flesh and bone. Touch me. Thomas, put your hand in my side. Put your hand in the scars. And those things. So to me, it's a picture of what we will, the bodies. When we see him, the Bible says we'll be like him. We'll see him as he is. So resurrection, spirit and soul. When Jesus comes back, that scripture we read in Thessalonians, when he returns, Bringing with him those who have died in Christ. Well, what what of them does he bring back with him? I think he brings back their spirit and soul. And then there, because resurrection, God created our bodies, and honors that resurrection when they come up out of the grave, but reunited that spirit and soul come up, and so the dead in Christ will rise first, and those that still alive and remain. Uh, again, we we can be, we may be the generation that sees Christ come back. If that's the case, then Jesus' trumpet of God sounds. Our bodies are transformed. In Corinthians 15, where you read, our bodies will be transformed at that point. And, uh, you know, if you, somebody said, I'm on the bottom of my shoes. I'm going to write two words. Good bye. Because I'm out of here. When he comes, <laughs> again, he's coming, I'm going. Uh, does that make sense? Have I left a big gap? So, but, but don't feel that, that there's an unconsciousness. This, uh, there's a, I believe Seventh-day Adventists are the one who teaches uh, there's a soul sleep that when you die, you're unconscious and, and you, you just lay in the ground and like that. Uh, man, I don't really see that like at all in Scripture, and uh, but but rather Paul saying absent from the body is present with the Lord, like a right now present with the Lord. I love that because I don't even see a time span, a, a delay. When my dad in that house, in my mom's house, uh, having been given just a short time to live, when he slipped out of his body, I just believe Dad was immediately in the presence of the Lord. The last breath out, the next breath in is here. Again, in a, girl, in a spirit body at that point, because his, his, his uh, physical body, the tent that he lived in, is buried up the road from where we are in the cemetery. But uh, so, and, and Thessalonians that, that we read the first, he said, Wherefore, comfort each other with these words. Man, for the believer, even at death, there's comfort here. Isn't that powerful? It's not a myth. It's not some hope so uh, we will become one with the cosmos and some way just be integrated into the gas atmosphere of the planet or whatever. No, Jesus said, I'm going to go in his presence. Hallelujah. Jason. Uh, okay, so I just got a question. Um, I think it's in the book of Timothy about... Uh, like the veil and Abraham and and all that. Okay. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, Hebrews. Okay. okay. And 
it kind of, I don't know, it, I, I get confused on, this, on, on that okay. because I know you're talking about the grave and, and you automatically go to heaven when you pass away. Yes. But then that, that, that comes about. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Like the, where he says, uh, please go tell my families. And he, and, and he says, it's too late for that. You know, you're already here. You know, you know what I'm talking okay. about? Okay. You're talking about when Jacob or Abraham Jesus, Abraham. are you talking about Jesus and talking about the man? Well, that, that's a different, that was what transpired in the Old Testament. Not in the Old Testament, but, uh, when Jesus was crucified on the cross, the veil, that separated the holy of holies from the rest of the temple was torn in two. It was a it was a picture that God was making that the way into the presence of God was now open because Jesus died. Of course, He rose again three days later. So uh, I'm not sure how you and uh, connect. So how am I, how can I sort through what? You're the reason I say okay okay when Jesus died on the cross right. And and the the bit the the robber or what was next to him, right? He says okay. he says take yes. me with you, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And, and he says you will be with today in paradise, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, but then there's like the part in Timothy where I think it's Abraham or somebody that said, please go back and tell my family about this place here. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. That was that was when Jesus was telling the story about the rich man and Lazarus when he died. Uh, the rich man went to hell, place of torment, and he said even Father Abraham, called Abraham's bosom, the place in Sheol where the departed dead uh, went before Calvary, before the cross, before Jesus' death, were confined there. Uh, but the, 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 uh, there was the place of torment called hell, which would be like a fire in eternity future for those who have rejected Christ. But the man being in torments, he said, at least send Lazarus to go and testify to my brothers that they don't have to come to this place. I'm tormented here. Tell them. Send them. Surely if one raises from the dead, they'll listen to him. That, is that not connect? So so that was the picture there. Uh, that yeah, Look, y'all asked me too many confusing questions. I'll be, I'm kidding. <laughs> go ahead, Stephanie. Well, of course, I'm about to confuse you. Because I, I don't have my reading glasses. And Hold that up. I have to like... Hold that up to oh, you. Sorry. Yeah. I have to piece this question together because okay. it goes back to the day. It's called Judgment Day, right? Okay. Uh huh. Is is that before or after the earth and heaven become one? Uh, go, is there a follow up question to this? Yes, because <laughs> okay. the follow up matters. There, there is a. There's a the the judgment of believers is not a heaven and hell judgment. We we're judged and rewarded according to our works. How do we cooperate with the grace of God? Because there will be a great. Them. There is the judgment of God when those who who have that the books were open and because people refused, even though there was a, a place for them to receive Christ, they refused to do so, and that judgment is the eternal judgment. There's no there's no uh, Purgatory. There's no second chance after death that now I will come and get it right uh, that way. That that's that's so the they don't that's ask the judgment. Those people questions they just send. Them. They they uh, no yeah we won't be standing before a holy God with excuses if I've lived my life rejecting Christ and you know I hear the message of the gospel clearly I refuse that uh, but. I believe the reason the books are open, I think I will see that there was my place. In hell, with the story that you uh, mentioned that Jesus told, in hell, people's memories are very much intact. He remembered he had brothers. He he, he had a concern. So I think heightened even. So I believe people who have been exposed to the gospel and refused uh, surrender to God, that will be don't remember every single time when God showed mercy. I wanted you to come to me. I set this up for this. You ran into that wall. That was me getting your attention. Would you come? And then, and then to know that. So God's plan, God's desire. Two times in the New Testament, He says, "Not God's will that anybody would perish, but that all would come to repentance." God's investment. Jesus came 
gave his life on the cross and then rose again. But he gave his life out of such love. Father loves so much. He doesn't want people going to hell. Man, I, I wish, I, I hope that you, you never in anger or whatever else would tell somebody to go to hell. And when we, when we say, when we talk about hell, it should be with tear in our eyes because that place is, is not, the Bible says, wasn't prepared for, for man, but was prepared for the devil and his angels. And if, but if people reject Christ, that will be their destiny. I don't want people to go to hell. God doesn't want to. Our hearts should be stirred with compassion. And people say stuff like, well, that's where all my friends are going to be. We're going to have a party. No, you're not. It's, a, it's not reality. We get those glimpses into eternity without God, and none of them are, are pretty, and it's not God's will for people to go there. So he provided a way out. Jesus. Okay. Well, I have two more questions. I'll just ask one. Okay. So, so, so two people, and I'm not going to mention names, but two people, at least two people but at this church have uh-huh. told, told me that Christians that didn't go to a church like this one, where you feel the Holy Spirit, Everything that the Bible says and that we do, uh-huh. it's like my parents went to Southern Baptist Church. That uh-huh. was quite boring. So <clears throat> that they would go to hell. Oh no! Because they didn't go through all. They were the wrong kind of Christian. Believe. Listen, let me clarify that because okay. this is really important. People don't get go to heaven because they go to Open Door or some other church that just believes identical to us. People go to heaven because they receive Jesus, put their faith and trust in Him. Jesus said, you must be born again inside. You know, I think we what church we go to, it matters. But, you know, I, I the church I grew up in didn't believe everything like I believe the Bible teaches now. But, but those are People are going to heaven. I have precious, whether Baptist or other labels that we put on, who have received Jesus and are walking in him. They're going to heaven. God didn't say, well, open door gets to be over here, but you Southern Baptists, you over here, you got to, oh, no, don't. So if people, if, you, if people have said that, then they're confused. And, and you can say, you, you need to talk to Pastor Ronnie about this because even... See, not everybody here is on the same page. That's part of why we like do this class, so we can be on the same page. There's no way we're walking through 66 books of the Bible and, and breaking all that down. But, but the basics and the foundational truths are, are existing. Jesus is the door. Through him, the Bible says we enter and are safe. And so we walk, in, walk this out in him. I my grandmother, till the day she died, called herself a Baptist. She had not been in a Baptist church, part of one, for decades. But she just liked, I guess she just liked that label. I don't know how she grew up. And, and, but she loved Jesus. She had received Jesus as Lord and Savior. So it's not about a label. That other way so isolates us. Listen, if you're part of a, 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 a church setting that doesn't believe in Jesus as the only way of salvation, then that's a fearful thing. Don't align with that because that's that's uh, so unbiblical. You can't get to heaven that way, believing the wrong way. And there are numbers of religious organizations that don't teach uh, the Bible. But again, like I said at the beginning of this lesson, you, you we don't have to believe all of these other things identically. Uh, I want to go back and align with the Bible because God's not wrong. If I'm out of line with the book, I'm wrong. I need to see how to realign with that. Does that kind of fill in some blanks, Stephanie? Catholics, you get it's it's okay because maybe other people in the room have that same same thought. that are kind of in the Lord and Stephanie. I'm so glad that you've come to Christ. You had a lot of varieties of religious experiences and the junk and but. Uh, Catholicism, as a as a uh, as they teach their their dogma, don't teach about being born again. It's a it's primarily a religion of works, and so catechism, first communion, infant baptism, all those different rituals, but none of those 
of being born again, receiving Jesus as Savior. And and when people mix terms up, man, you're pulling me into this, and I'll go here willingly, but I don't want to be offensive. And if I am, if you come from that, uh, receiving Jesus is not ju the Eucharist, is not what causes a person to be born again. They the picture is receiving Christ because this is the body of Christ and, and the cup is the blood of Christ and uh, those are incredible symbols and we celebrate last Sunday or, or in the last couple of weeks that. But uh, but the reality is there are Catholics who are going to heaven because they put their faith and trust in Jesus. And they may they may still be going to the Catholic Church. They may be have still coming up out of getting understanding. Some people who have come to Christ and 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 in Sometimes people come to Christ in spite of the church that they're attending that doesn't embrace the truth of God's Word. I just never want that one of the things I want to make sure that people don't equate church membership with salvation. Well, I'm a member at Open Door. You can be a member at Open Door and not be going to heaven because you've got to be a member of the body of Christ. I mean, receive Jesus. That's the thing. And, and even if you're not a member of church, I think the Bible teaches that we should align ourselves and with the body of believers, and uh, don't forsake assembling ourselves together, and that and that partnership and that accountability and that structure that's beneficial. I learn things from one. We learn that from one another, and and uh, encouragement and all of that. So don't. I don't want you to be the lone ranger just making it. Doing. I, I flip on the TV once in a while and see some preacher. Look, there's a difference in being part of the body. And I'm, I'm thankful that you're here walking through this ownership slash membership class this way. But I want, I never get that confused. But if you're on your way to heaven, you've received Jesus, then we ought to belong to church and we ought to be doing family together. I hadn't forgot you had your hand up if you forgot your question. You? No? Yeah. Oh, earlier, about five or ten, five or ten minutes ago. I'm sorry. I just wouldn't want to disrespect you. Okay. I hope, I hope again, some things we can't fully unpack, but I, please don't get an exclusive uh, picture of open door versus this, uh, another church or something. Again, go to the truth. If a church, including me, including anybody that speaks at the front, if you hear us say things that don't line up with Scripture, please come and, and let's talk about that. Again, I not be angry about that. I'm not, I'm not insulted when people say, I had a, had a, a, a visit with a, don't forget, okay, had a visit with a pastor this week, and I, I love this guy, he's just a tremendous man, but he brought up something that we, that we disagree on. It's, it's kind of on the subject right here. You know what? That's not a deal breaker. This guy loves Jesus. He's, he's passionate about a missionary to Peru for a lot of years and, and just sharing the gospel. And, and, and I can partner with him. We can, we can differ about when Jesus is coming back and the details of that. It doesn't break fellowship at all. Does that make sense? But those essentials. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. That means a Unitarian Universalist that doesn't include Jesus as God and the way of salvation. I, I, I don't have a basis of fellowship. I don't mean we have to be mean to people. We want to share truth with them. The others that are, maybe they're even traditional labels, but, but discard the Bible and, and what the gospel truly is. I don't have a foundation of fellowship but again we don't we don't have to be mean ugly all that stuff but i need we need to be able to discuss truth and uh, let's be willing and able to do that out of love amen go ahead okay. introduce yourself Hi. so everybody knows i'm deanna yes. uh and i'm grateful to be here i wanted to i felt led to address the gentleman in front of me yes there's something that i heard that spoke to my spirit a while back. Um, there, it was a teaching from a messianic Jew. Uh huh. Okay, and when he spoke on it, I had to go back and look because uh -huh. it certainly wasn't what I was taught. Uh -huh. And when you're taught, you can kind of attach yourself to those beliefs. True. True. So, anyway, when we deal with Abraham. 
there's a part in the Old Testament that says Abraham uh, Abraham was announced as inheritor of earth and heaven. Uh huh. Uh huh. So God created a spot in heaven because Jesus had not come yet. Uh huh. That allowed Abraham and his children, the ones deemed righteous, after they died, but prior to Jesus' resurrection, to go to. Um, and at that point, what happened on the cross that Jesus said to the thief, I'll see you in paradise, which is this Abraham's bosom, which is the area where the people prior to Jesus went after death. And even then, when Jesus um, arose, was resurrected, and Mary clung to him, Jesus said, I haven't ascended to my father yet, which means that when Jesus died and he said, I'll see you in paradise, he had not gone to heaven. He went to paradise first, where Abraham and his sons were, and then he he went to hell and paid the price. So first he went to Abraham and Abraham's sons in paradise and then crossed over. And there's a story where Jesus talks about in, in Luke where he's ta- where he talks about, um, you know, this guy who was mistreated at the gates of, of a house. And that's that was, Lazarus, ta- and that was, that was Lazarus. Lazarus. So, and the other guy could see him, but he couldn't get to him. And he was like, well, at least send, send Lazarus back to tell tell him. And Jesus said, even if I do, you won't believe me. And then Jesus goes on to tell some of the Pharisees that they are not sons of Abraham because of their, their disbelief. Lineage, yes. So the whole Bible, a lot of people have a tendency to pick out something and think it contradicts with something else. However, it's crazy how much it confirms itself. Sure. So I don't know if that helps you any. I don't know if it helps you any, but it helped me tremendously to break off a a, a belief system that was creating um, deception in me that was making me believe some of the things that I, Stephanie, when Stephanie was talking, people tell me this and people tell me that. And those create strongholds. Strongholds are are mindsets. And mindsets have to be broken. You have to believe that Jesus is the only way. You have to believe the Bible is inherent and Uh God inspired. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deanne. And I would uh, uh, confirm part of that and, and my, my, I think Ephesians 5, when Jesus led those who were captive, captive, when he ascended them to the Father. So my, my take would be uh, Sheol, uh, the, the, the place of the departed dead, the spirits and souls of those who died. But not all of it was the compartment of hell and torment, but the other part was referred to as Abraham's bosom. Jesus went and he led those captives so Old Testament believers in God, Old Testament saints, that's what Abraham fought, fell in the category of, then were ascended into the Lord. That's not a place that we find New Testament, uh, a new covenant now, but, but rather that we go into the presence of God, that place called heaven. Eternity, future, is in the new heaven, new earth, and recreated, and uh, it's good, is what I'm telling you. And so following Jesus. So thank you. Thank you. Pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, bottom of page 23. Uh, again, I'm not going to exhaust this thing, but I'll, I'll expose to you in these last few minutes. There, there are three schools of thought regarding this occurrence called the rapture or the catching away. Again, I personally believe that this will occur before what is known as the Great Tribulation, where God's wrath is poured out on the earth seven years. But others seem to believe it will, that that catching away will happen in the middle of the tribulation, the three and a half years. Others believe it won't occur till after the great tribulation. Uh, verse uh, 
There will be a seven year period of intense tribulation in which the Antichrist will appear. At the end of that tribulation, Jesus will descend bodily with the raptured saints and he'll set up his kingdom and rule and reign for a thousand years on the earth. After the, after this, the earth is divinely, totally renovated by fire. The references in Second Peter that are printed out for you will, will help clarify that. Uh, that's, uh, that's big deal stuff. I believe very likely that the Antichrist is alive on the earth today. I, 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 I think it's very probable that that's the case. But let me, let me give one caveat. There are people who, who believe that Hitler was the Antichrist. And obviously he's gone and we're still here. Uh, and, and people in the past. This does not mean because we're, we're not in that uh, Antichrist hasn't been revealed and we're not in the great tribulation and I believe we'll be caught up uh, to be with the Lord before that happens worldwide. If you are in Nigeria, if you're a Christian in Nigeria right now, you probably think you're in the great tribulation. Christians are being slaughtered and persecuted. More, more Christians are being killed in Nigeria than every other country in the earth for being Christians. It's, it's horrendous. And yet, anyway, uh, so this doesn't mean that we won't endure serious persecution. Even in this country, it's possible. We, we as believers want to live in fear. The early church, they were persecuted, killed. You see in the book of Acts that, that James, being the first martyr, was beheaded. They intended to do Peter, this, the Apostle Peter, the same way. God delivered him. God did not deliver James from death. Took him to be with him. So either way, as believers, either way, guys, you win. We win. But in the meantime, our assignment is to share Jesus with other people. Not religion with other people. Jesus, truth. And uh, whether, uh, but these things, these scriptures that are that are written here, I think, are uh, really important. Can we uh, look bottom of page 24. Let's read these two passages. I've got to quit. But Titus 2 verse 11. Are y'all there? Amen. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness, the word denying means say no to, ungodliness and worldly wrong desires, lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. The grace of God empowers us to do that. Verse 13, Look, here's our perspective. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, you, there's an old song that, that, that said, If you catch me looking up, I'm looking for Jesus. <laughs> so I don't mean you should walk down the street looking like this. But inside, we're looking for, anticipating the return of Christ. It doesn't come today. It could be tomorrow. So, But as people that we're to live with a, an eternal focus, not just temporary for focus. That doesn't mean go quit your job, ignore your kids, and do all the other stuff, and planning. Uh, plan like Jesus isn't coming for a long time. Live and, and have an intensity like he's coming today. Sharing him and walking this way. First John 3 verse 2 at the bottom of the page, 24. Dear friends, when we're already God's children. He's writing to Christians. But he's not yet shown us what we'll be like when Christ appears. But we do, do know that we will be like him for we will see him as he really is. And turn the page, 25 verse 3. And all who have this eager expectation will keep themselves pure just as he is pure. Anticipating. Kim, uh, my wife, had shared, I think, her experience having come to know Christ at a really young age. But as a teen, got involved in alcohol, street dances, and that kind of stuff. But she had enough of the knowledge of God. She'd go, she'd go home and, and when, she, when she'd lay her head down at night, oh, Jesus, don't come back tonight. I don't know how effective she thought that prayer was going to be, but it's a lot better to just, God help me and, and give me the power to overcome. And I, I say, but, but that was a period of time. Now don't come back. 
So, because with an anticipation of the Lord's return, it, the Bible says, all who have this eager expectation will keep themselves pure, just as he's pure. So, wait, I thought God kept us pure. He is the power for that. But there's a cooperation that we have. Isn't that right? Cooperating with the grace of God at work in us. So may the Lord help us to be on fire believers, loving Jesus and loving people enough to speak the truth. Amen. Partnering together. And if, if may, the Bible says, Jesus said, occupy till I come. Literally, the Greek means do business till I come. We're, we're involved in kingdom business. We keep doing business. We're not, again, hiding out in a foxhole or on a mountain somewhere waiting for Jesus to come back. We're to be sharing, doing the work of the kingdom. How about being kind, being loving, being truthful, those things in the meantime. And when he comes, we get to go. I'm kind of holding out for the group right, going together. I, I know that you know, people may one at a time, I could go read the Lord like today, but uh, I, I'm kind of just still anticipating the group right. We're going together. Trumpet's going to sound. Ooh, the dead in Christ will rise. And then we, which are alive and remain, will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we'll ever be with the Lord. Amen. Oh, glory. Father, thank you for your love for us. Thank you, Lord, with all our uh, lack of understanding in, in specifics and in certain areas that you love us anyway. And you've given us enough truth that we uh, cannot deny that we cannot misunderstand about Jesus, that we can know you and live for you and let your power be at work in us. Thank you for your incredible love. Let it flow through us to others as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you all. Now you got to hurry.